Okay. All right, let's bring Jackie on because Jackie, Jackie's here. Let's let's get her perspective. Uh, from I want to ask Jackie about the WWF. All right. WWE. Um, <laughs> <laughs> WWE, I'm come sorry. on, come, come on. on. All right, well, Jackie, I, I'm thinking back to when I was like in eighth grade and I would have to, my mom would have to literally call the phone company, give the credit card over the phone so we could have WrestleMania and like SmackDown on pay-per-view on our like little TVs with definitely not 4K. And my friend would literally <laughs> come from down the street because like we would rotate like who rented it that week or whatever. It was like once a month they had the big events. So like I'm still kind of living in the WWF days of like Stone Cold and The Undertaker and all those guys. I know they're still coming around. But like my childhood was like I loved hockey. But the only thing I loved as much as hockey was WWF as a kid. Like loved WWF. Well, listen, man after my own heart, because same, bro, same. (laughs) And I have to say, I have to say, I'm not just saying this because I know I work for the company. I'm not just like pumping corporate tires here. Wrestling to me is as exciting as it was back in the Attitude Era. It's like wrestling is making a big comeback right now. The Rock obviously has a lot to do with that. But even before he came back, I mean, it was on the incline. We are, it feels like the Attitude Era is back. And so every week on Monday Night Raw, like 11 year old Jackie is just like, what's <laughs> happening right now? Like, are we doing this? This is so fun. Um, so yeah, hockey, WWE, when they come together, it's the best. Was there, was there ever anything cooler? I would be yelling at the TV when, I didn't when the Rock you. would be going <laughs> side to side, getting ready for like the people's elbow or, or Stone Cold would beat someone down and then he'd like smash beers and start like drowning oh. himself. I would be yelling at the TV as like a nine-year-old kid. It was like so, it was like playoff hockey. No you joke. are like it emotionally, you're so emotionally invested as a kid <laughs> when you're watching WWE. Like it makes or breaks you. Like the amount of, like, I don't know if this is good or not, but the amount of young <laughs> kids that I see crying at wrestling shows was like, no, why is, why is The Rock beating up Cody Rhodes? It's too much, but it's just, it's cinema, man. It's cinema. It's so great. Um, I love it. And The Rock is back and it's, uh, it's been really fun to cover. And hey. You know, uh, I was just joking with the TNT crew that Matt Rempe should maybe uh, try his hand at WWE. See how that goes. He no- he seems to command a crowd. I mean, uh-huh. tell me I'm wrong. The crowd That's loves per- him. Perfect segue, Jackie, because we've been talking about this now <laughs> for like 10 minutes. And and I have admittedly told you I was never into the wrestling thing. But I'm going to try because I see your clips all the time. And I don't know if you guys remember this. The only like bit of wrestling I watched as a kid was the celebrity death match, like the animated thing on MTV. Remember those? Yeah, those were so fucking those. funny. Those were so funny. Those that was like what I got out of it. But uh, Jackie, to your point, Kobe thinks Rempy doesn't. Wait, have no, hold that on, much. hold on. Whoa. I feel like Jackie has something to say <laughs> about celebrity death words match. all the time. I want to hear it. I want to hear what she has to well, say. It wasn't going to be about celebrity death matches. It was going to be that I have made an effort to get WWE superstars into hockey yeah. because I think that there are a lot of. Um, similarities in ways between hockey and WWE. So I've been getting some of the wrestlers into hockey. Maybe I got to get you into WWE, Johnny. Maybe that's the 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 crossover content. You know, you need to hang out with CM Punk, go to a wrestling event. You'll be hooked. I promise. Yeah. I, uh, I'll have to attend one for sure. Um, so I won't knock it. It's different live, just like hockey. It's better live. Like once you go to a live event, you're like, Oh, I get it. I get it. Fair enough. Fair enough. But speaking of tonight, you know, we just talked, you're covering the Rangers Devils game for TNT in New York. I know you're going to Madison Square Garden in like 10 minutes, so we're not going to keep you too long. But uh, this Matt Rempe thing, I mean, I've experienced it. I've been here. I felt the building. Kobe hasn't. So he's a fucking hater about it. Do you think (laughs) Rempe actually has impacted this group and helps them have this life or, or helps them even win games? Or do you think it's all kind of a charade and it's just good entertainment for the fans? Cause you know all about both, right? Like, you know how to entertain the fans and, and whatnot. So where do you separate it? Sure. Um, <laughs> well, a politician Jackie would say, well, any player that's on the ice has some sort of impact. The question is, is it a positive impact or a negative impact? Right. Uh, but I won't do that. I go back and forth with Rempe, but I'm going to say that he does positively influence the New York Rangers because I think that 
it would be silly to think that if a crowd is chanting someone's name or fully vocal because a certain player is on the ice or in the lineup or doing something, whether you agree with the what he does or why he's there is besides the point. To me, if the crowd is giving you a reaction and you're another player on that team and the crowd is getting loud, you're going to feed off of that energy, even if it's not for you, right? If it's for your teammate. So I think there's that psychological impact there um, for those six minutes that he's on the ice <laughs> or whatever, whatever. Even when he's not on the ice, sometimes they're chanting. Rumpy he's, middling. So, he's middling right now. <laughs> so I do think that, that there is somewhat of an impact in that sense. I go back and forth in terms of the actual hockey game, what, yeah. what he brings and what he does. But the last time I covered the Rangers, they were playing the Islanders on a Sunday. I don't know. Maybe it was two weeks ago. And yeah. listening to Peter Laviolette, I asked him um, off camera, you know, do you think that he is an important player? Like, does he bring value to this team? And he's not going to sit there and say no. So I am aware that, like, he's not going to be like, yeah, he is brutal. I don't know why he's here. <laughs> but, but I do think that he very genuinely and somewhat passionately you know, described Rempe as a player that he believes is an, is an important piece, albeit in a small role, when the playoffs roll around just over a seven-game series and the ability to sort of wear down an opponent and, and be sort of an intimidating presence on the ice. Like, yeah, is he the guy that's going to go out there and be a game-breaker and score, you know, a game-winner in the dying minutes of a playoff game? Well, no, he won't be on the ice. But I do think that he's someone that could be used – effectively um, as just a presence as just someone that you're going to be aware if he's out there because he's massive and he can skate somehow and he can hit. So yeah. I do think that he does provide value and it's all about how you use him as a tool in your, you know, quote unquote toolbox. I want him to play. Like I want him to be in the lineup uh -huh. in the playoffs. I do. I, I, I got to tell you, I do. Okay, so and I know and, people will hate me for that. I have no, to no, applaud I, Jackie for taking both sides but, there. But you're, <laughs> well, she said, well, she took both Jackie. Sides. Yeah. She, she, I mean, she, I did say yeah. I owned it. She, she yeah. warned us on that. So let me yeah. ask you a question then, Jackie. And and I can really appreciate the fact that every role on a hockey team is important, no matter how big or how small. As as someone who black aced some very long play. You're the reason the Bruins got it in, in <laughs> Boston and was was literally there to do, you know, hard practice reps as a penalty killer while Chara is just unloading slab shots. Um, you know, again, like everybody has to find a way to do something. You just, you, or you can't just take up space. So I, I, I really do appreciate what you're saying about him. But here's my question for you. If you're coaching the New York Rangers, right? And yeah. if you don't have a good playoff run this year, you're, you're on the unemployment line this summer, Okay. And are you, is he a guy that you're looking at as like, he's going to help me win playoff games, like opening night. Is he in your playoff, in your playoff lineup? I think it depends who the Rangers are playing. I absolutely do. I think if the Rangers are playing an opponent where Laviolette feels that they need somewhat of a, I think he can get a physical presence from other players on the Rangers. It's not like Rempe's the only guy on the Rangers that can hit someone, but yeah. I do think it depends on the matchup. It depends who you're playing, just like anything. And it depends on the series, right? Maybe Matt Rempe's not in your in your lineup game one opening round. But if a series gets intense, gets a little physical, things happen, injuries happen, maybe you throw him in there for a game, see what happens. Again, I think it's all about the way that you use him. And I think just having him as an option, um, especially over a, a long series, I think can be effective if you need it. Do you have to do it? No, but I do think that he – you will see Matt Rempe in the playoffs in a Rangers uniform taking shifts. I, I guarantee it. That's that's, that's what I think. Yeah. But I just – I don't know. It's I don't think he'll be in the lineup game one because that's a, that's a feel-out game. If you can get go out there and win it and in a, you know, whatever, then you don't need him. But I think you could need him in games three, four, five, depending on what happens. I want to shift away. That makes sense. Am I explaining yeah. that right? Yeah. yeah. No. Well, that's reasonable. I think that's 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 a very reasonable approach to the situation. And the reason I you know, I've, I've, I've been known as a reasonable gal. You know, no one's ever I'm said not. I'm unreasonable before. <laughs> well, the reason I give Johnny a hard time about it is because during I literally it's like Lynn Sanity 2.0 when when Jeremy Lynn with the Knicks like had that two weeks of stardom. 
Um, and I do, I've never been in the building for it. I've seen it and I, I loved it when it was going on. Like I really did, but I just, you know, Johnny made a comment to me on the show that was, he has changed the full identity of the New York Rangers. Okay. And you I added was like, the word full there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Delete the word full. He changed the identity of the New York Rangers. He and does though. Doesn't he? See, I don't agree with way. that because this is a guy who only played, what, 13 games? And the Rangers have been a top team in the league the entire season. And he only plays a few minutes a night. He averages like just under five, six minutes of ice. So I'm like, how does he change? I think that's disrespectful to the rest of the team that's been contributing for 82 games or, you know, have been a first well, place team basically the whole season. What if you what if you change the verbiage around that and it's not okay he's changed the identity of the team but he's added a layer to the course, onion that was not previously 100%. there right like, no disrespect to Jacob Truba like Truba is a is an intimidating right? presence right? obviously we have seen Truba completely change playoff series in the past with one hit like I I, I don't like that he kind of sometimes when people talk about Rumpy gets lost like let's not yeah. forget about Jacob Truba. And what he brings in terms of like, I don't know, being aware of him on the ice. Because if you're not, like you could be out of a series. But I do think that Rempe does add a layer to Johnny's point that kind of changes the way you perceive the Rangers when he's in the lineup. She's so good at just taking so, the side. She really is. You're a pro. She didn't take Should I run for I, office? I don't, Should I, don't I run think, for office? I don't think she, she, I don't, well, yes, you should. Um, I will say. 100% you should run for office. As much as I am, as much as I am like sitting on the fence and kind of dipping my toe I into the same both sides of this, I do, I will say I lean more towards like, I like rugby. I, yeah. I want to see him in a playoff game for the Rangers. Well, he's entertained. There's en there's entertainment yeah. factor there. And Just we're, to see. we're in the entertainment side of this. You know, we're all doing the entertainment side. I, I completely agree, Johnny. He adds a layer, but he did not change the no, identity. That, that was like, the best way to put it. That was I mean, that is that it. is a much better way to yeah. put it than, you know, because then you're, you're not forgetting about Truba and yeah. you're not forgetting about 110 point Artemi Panarin and you're not forgetting about, you know, their power play and Adam Fox is, is, you know, Norris trophy capabilities some nights, right? And like you're just going to disrespect Lafreniere. Also though, him. like this is really bad to say, but I'm going to say it anyways. Like Rumpy is a guy that you can throw into a really maybe intense physical series. And if he goes out there and hits someone and maybe like crosses the line and gets suspended, it's not really affecting the Rangers too much, but it's going to yeah. affect the player. It's going to affect yeah. the team or the player that he takes out for sure. So, like, if that was – not that anyone would ever plan for that or yeah. premeditate <laughs> well, it's, that. It's However, if it, if it were to happen and Rempe does something that gets him suspended in a playoff series, the Rangers are just – are from a hockey standpoint, are totally fine. But yeah, if right. a defenseman's taken out for the other team, like, that's a problem. Oh, my God, what's the dog's name? <laughs> <laughs> That's that's Oliver the Golden Retriever. Um, Aww, he likes to Ollie. make his presence Do you call him Ollie ever? He has a lot he of nicknames. It depends. Name. It, it depends on his behavior. Depends on his nickname. Sure. Okay. That I understand. That makes sense. <laughs> All right, Jackie. I want to throw you on the hot seat. I promised I wouldn't do this, uh, but Great. I'm gonna do it anyway. But while we're on the topic of the Rangers, I want to shift away from Rempe. But I'm gonna give you two guesses. I'm I'm gonna compare two different players in the Eastern Conference, both on playoff teams right now. Okay. I'll give you a guess, and then I want to, you know, kind of compare the two and ask you a question about it. But okay. here's, one, here's one player's playoff points. 10 goals, 37 assists, 47 points, and 50 career playoff games. Here's the other. 16 goals, 30 assists, 46 points, and 57 playoff games. So one is 46 points in 57 games, and the other is 47 I points in 50 games. Any guess on who the two players might be? I have no idea. I don't know. Okay. So I'll just tell you, I wasn't going to actually sit here and make like, a guess. I'm like 50 playoff games. Like how many series is that? Like, yeah. So, so you realize she doesn't just cover the Rangers. I know. I know. Like you. She's not wearing worry, a Rangers I, I didn't jersey think she was going to get it under her nice yeah. getup. You said an Eastern conference playoff jersey. team, right? That is so yeah. there's eight different teams that it could be. I don't know. Okay. Just so the give two, it to me. The two players have both played in seven career postseasons. It's Mitch Marner and Artemi Panarin. I was going to guess Mitch Marner. I was going to guess Mitch Marner. I swear. I mean, I tried to work in, you know, like, I know you're a Leafs gal, Rangers. It, I yes. kind of, like, led you there a bit. But 
So um, here's my question. Where is this yeah. going? What are we, what are well, we about to talk about? Artemi Panarin and Mitch Marner have both flourished in the regular season. And when it comes to the postseason, they're counted on and the fans get on them when they don't deliver. Which one do you think has to have the better postseason, not only for their team this year? Because I think Panarin might be more important to the Rangers right now, but just for the overall fan base, which one do you think needs to perform more in the playoffs this year? Mitch Marner. Because both are crazy. Yeah, I, I I don't disagree, but I – and maybe this is my – I am a Leaf fan, um, but – I do think it's Mitch Marner. I just think both of them are in high pressure markets for sure. Both of them are going to get ripped to shreds if they don't if they don't perform and they have early exits in the postseason. But I just think it's Mitch Marner because I think Mitch Marner has in the Toronto market and and some of it is is unwarranted, but some of it he's brought on himself. He's kind of become this player that's like it's me against Toronto, right? Like it's me against the Toronto media against the Toronto. Mm -hmm. He's always kind of become this like guy in the media even with the, his injury right like he's just like oh like it is what it is like you guys don't need to know like he, he speaks in a way that is very combative um, with the fan base in a way sometimes and so I think because of that his his persona publicly is a little bit I don't want to use the word softer but like mm. softer <laughs> And so I think that the, I think that the reaction to him not producing the postseason will be louder and more um, vicious than it would be for Panarin. But I think both of them are are going to feel the heat if they don't produce. But I'm going to say Mitch Marner just because I think that the Leafs, you know, they're perennial choke artists. They can't win in the postseason. They haven't won in a thousand years. They were up three one against Montreal. They couldn't beat Tampa. Like. They just, their run has, in Mitch Marner's era, has been embarrassing in a lot of ways because of their regular season success. So, you know, the New York Rangers have at least had some, had a deep postseason run in, in recent memory, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, also, I'm going to say Marner. It's also a situation with, with Marner where it's the entire city of Toronto. Yeah. I mean, it, yes. it's like the NFL in Toronto. I mean, he's got... Every household in every neighborhood in probably the province of Ontario with a magnifying glass on the back of his jersey. And while the New York Rangers do have a phenomenal fan base, it is a big East Coast market, a lot of national TV. It's still New York City. OK, you know, Taylor Swift is still performing right down the street, potentially uh, the next day. Right. There's way more distraction in New York. And yeah. so I, I think there's no bigger microscope than Toronto. It, it's just, it's, I, I don't think it's even close to be honest. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I ever fully realized it until um, James Van Riemsdyk really like was explaining it to me. You know, he's a guy that I grew up with Jackie and I've, I've, you know, super, super close with our, our entire lives. He's from an hour up the road. So we played hockey together quite a bit. And then, national team together and we did all that fun stuff so it's crazy what these guys deal with in toronto you can't walk down the street in new york panarin can walk down the street and no one would have yeah. any idea who he was maybe one person if he i think was you're discrediting random, new york a little bit i'm not shredding new york i'm just saying no, discrediting unless, discrediting i'm not discrediting new york you can't I mean, there's nothing to discredit i'm just saying you're talking about NFL pressure versus like NHL pressure. And those are, yeah. those are massively different things. But not, well, I also think, yeah, but Jackie, I think maybe it was a year or, or two years ago. I might ask you this question on, on the Rangers podcast that you came on, but like there was a, uh, you know, hypothetical conversation of like trading one for one Panarin for Marner. And there was like a no way in hell from Toronto fans. But I wonder yeah. if that maybe has shifted with the year Panarin is that I know well, there's a difference in age and whatnot but it's interesting right because I think a lot of the conversation around the Leafs when when they get eliminated from the playoffs over the last Eventually. few years has yeah. been like are they going to trade a core piece are they going to trade a core piece are they going to trade a core piece and they they never really have right like they've never gone down the road of trading a Marner, a Nylander, obviously not a Matthews mm -hmm. um, but that kind of becomes the conversation and it's always been we're, we're sticking with these with these guys. We believe that they will eventually get it done. We believe they're good enough to to take it home, right? But I often go back to 
losing to Montreal, the three, one series, you know, Marner did not have a good series against Montreal that year. Um, And I I wonder if Mitch Marner is the type of player that would thrive more in a different environment in the Mm -hmm. postseason, because I do think that as much as Marner constantly tells us that he doesn't care what anyone thinks and he doesn't care, it's very clear that he is somebody that reads and watches what is being said about him and it affects him. And I think I'm not saying that as a criticism. I think Mitch Marner cares a lot. I almost think Mitch Marner cares maybe too much Mm -hmm. because of where he's from and because he's playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I believe that Marner might be the type of player if they don't, if they don't get it done this year. And like, to me, the Leafs, I just don't think that they're a Stanley cup. I don't think they're capable of winning 16 games and four playoff runs. That's just me. This me. Mm-hmm. I hope I'm wrong. I hope to God I'm wrong. And you can throw this you're, clip on you're the You're not internet. wrong. You're not <laughs> wrong. I, don't, I just, it's hard, right? Because in, in the Toronto market, I, I have to really step back sometimes because when you consume the media there, you can be convinced, right? Like you can be like, wait a second. Are they like, maybe, maybe they are a championship mm-hmm. caliber team. I don't think that they are. So depending what happens in this postseason, like I just think Marner could thrive somewhere else because I think that he not only feels the pressure, I think he, I think he, it affects him. I think that he cares too much. And I think if he goes somewhere where he doesn't actually not, not care about the logo on his sweater, but it doesn't mean so much to him personally, I think that maybe he would have a little bit more success when, when the pressure intensifies in the playoff. He, we'll he could bring you back like a number one defenseman, you know, or, or really bolster your defense. We don't need too. one of those, do we? It's a strong, mean, <laughs> Toronto been trying to figure out their back end. Has that been I mean, like a thing? Look, I, and I, I think the job that tree living has done trying to sort of <clears throat> patch, you know, big, big holes with band-aids. Like, I think he's done an okay job at that. Like I really do. I think with, yeah. with some of the little off the radar moves he made back there, with Edmondson um, and Labushkin and those guys. And like, I think Jake McCabe has gotten pretty comfortable in a Leafs uniform. You kind of know what you're getting out of him, but you just look at the teams that are going to win the cup this year or the teams that win the cup. Like they go six deep on the back end. Like they just do. I mean, you rarely see a team winning a Stanley cup anymore with holes in their back end. You just don't see it. And so, and you rarely see a team go- that gets to the final that hasn't dealt with injuries to key players on the back end. Yeah. So not only do you have to get through all of that and match the opposition, you have to know that your defensemen are going to get banged up. They're going to get hurt. So do the Leafs have the talent back there, the skill level back there, and the depth back there to get through that? No, don't. I don't think that they do. They don't. I don't think that they do. So. All right, Jackie. Yeah, I know Lobby. Let's talk in at ten thirty. You gotta get to MSG. <laughs> yes. So before you go, before you go, give us your MVP quick, and then we'll let you leave. And you can plug. Oh the my Jackie. god! Red- so you're gonna you do that plug to the me. Jackie Redmond show. You got a lot going on. By the way, I used a clip of your Jackie Redmond show for my U18 team before nationals. The interview what? you did. You did an interview with Mark Messier. Yes. Um, Somebody told me, "Hey, go watch this. There's a soundbite in this interview that is a very." applicable to like getting ready for nationals and a playoff run. And it was the question you talked with him about winning in the playoffs and what it took from, and I clipped that it was probably like two minutes and I showed it to our U18 team before their big weekend. So great job with that one. Like you you, you pulled, you pulled real, real good stuff out of Messier in that interview um, on your show. That actually like, that would mean a lot to me in any situation, but in this one in particular, a ton, because like I didn't prep that interview. Like I literally went to NHL to do my show and we did not have Messier booked and he was there meeting, oh, wow. I think with Gary Bettman for something. Uh, one of his, He has like a million side projects. So one of his side projects, and I literally saw him in the hallway and I was like, hey, what's up? And I was like, he's like, what are you doing here? And I was like, I'm doing my show. I want to you want to come on like kind of as a joke and he was like yeah and i was like oh okay uh what am i gonna ask mark fucking messier right now like you know it's like one of those things where you're like this isn't just like a off the cuff interview like this is a one-on-one with messier and i know he's on tv and everything now but still like you don't want to drop the ball in that situation. So that was like a five minute prep situation for Mark Messier. So thank you. I appreciate that. I hope the team loved it. 
Um, cause he, he did, he, he's an, ins- he's an inspiring guy in SCA when he talks, when you get him talking about, about well, winning he's the ultimate winner. what it takes, right? He's yeah. the ultimate winner. I mean, I think that resonates yeah. with any person who plays the game of hockey, no matter what age they are. You'll have yeah. to give and me you look at because I, uh, I well, choked when I talked to mess. <laughs> oh, I doubt that. I oh, doubt oh that. Jackie, <laughs> yes, he sure did. <laughs> Go ahead, Johnny, real quick. Tell her what you what did. Happens? I'll tell you quick. I went out to him at a bar at like 2 a.m. at All-Star Weekend, and I told him that I wrote that he was my hero in my fifth grade yearbook, and I was drunk, and it was really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? He just said, oh, you don't remember. Cool, man. <laughs> Something I'll he's never like, live down, for sure. He's like, cool story, bro. You and yeah. like millions of others. Yeah. Get out, old buddy. Show <laughs> job. <laughs> Um, you asked me about MVP, and I tweeted about the MVP race last night just because, you know, it, it really bothers me when we talk about the Hart Trophy and the MVP race that if you if you even mention, like, hey, this guy should be in the conversation, people automatically think that you're saying, well, Nathan McKinnon shouldn't win it or, you know, so-and-so yeah. shouldn't win it. That's not it. It's just why can't we talk about six or seven different guys? It doesn't happen every year where we have the ability to make solid cases for that many people. Mm-hmm. Why can't we have those conversations without people just like jumping on you and being like, absolutely not? Because Artemi Panarin is having an MVP caliber season for the New York Rangers. I do believe that. Do I think that he's going to win? No. Would I vote for him to win? No. But can we acknowledge it? Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, listen. Points, but he's even not going to win. No, of he's course not- he's not going to win. But he's got like 40 more points than his next closest teammate or whatever it is. So, like, I, to me, yeah, I, what? Sorry, what's that? I, actually, I cut you off like twice. No, no, I, was, okay. I was just going to say, like, even, like, all right, you, you might shut me for this, but if, if Pittsburgh gets in the playoffs, like, is there a case for Crosby? I think that's a valid question. I do think that's a valid question. No, Colby? Colby Colby's going to shit on that for sure. Well, I he's see about to score 40 goals, which is matching what he scored as an 18-year-old. You know, I mean, look, I, you'll never – I'll never I'll never discredit or shit on anything Sidney Crosby. Like, that guy, he's a, he's a Mount Rushmore player. So mm-hmm. his stuff is weighted – should be weighted differently than others. But, Jackie, I just look at Nate McKinnon I and I look at – the fact that this is a guy who's going to have 50 goals and a shitload of assists and score 130 points. I look at the other guys that are in that 130 point category right now. And I look at their splits of goals and assists. And I just have a hard time thinking anybody else is going to win that award when this guy's going to get 50 and 80 or 50 and 85. Like, I, I just think that that's such a rare split for a guy like McDavid's going to get 100 assists. But he doesn't have the goals. He's got 20, you know, 27 goals or 29 29 goals. Like, I just think that, like, the way we look at the award, it's it's hard for me to think McKinnon is not the clear favorite with that split that he's putting up and with how good he has made his team. I will will preface this by saying Nate Nate Dogg would, would get my vote for the MVP. But I do think there are interesting conversations to be had because, yes, goals and assists and total points, like those things obviously matter. But I do think there is something to be said about the value in the context of the team that you're playing on. And what does that team look like if you're off of it? Now, obviously, the Colorado Avalanche look a lot different if Nathan McKinnon is not putting up those numbers this year. However, like I do think that the Sidney Crosby question is interesting. I think the Austin Matthews question is interesting. Some pe- I've talked to legit like people that I respect in hockey who are like, if he gets 70, he should win it, no questions yeah. asked. Forget everything uh, else. I, what do you I'm- say to that? I'm I'm not against that. I'm not. I go back 70, and forth. I go back and forth on that one, and I'm goals, a Leafs fan. Yeah, yeah. Seventy goals is ridiculous. I mean, yeah. that, if he hits seventy goals, then he pops himself into that top two or three immediately. Conversation. Oh, finalist for sure. Yeah. yeah but does like, he get your vote, he's, or does Nate still on, get it? Yeah, I mean, honestly, seventy I don't goals get is a vote. I don't Eight get a players vote. have done that. Eight. Um, That's it. You get a I vote would, in my world, Colby. You get a vote in my world. So I want to like, know where your vote I would goes. Say I would have a hard time ignoring 70 goals as my number yeah. of the number one guy on my ballot. Right. And, and yeah. I, I would have a very difficult time ignoring that because like that pace in today's hockey with how good goaltenders are. I mean, it, it's uh, 
that's like the pace of a guy from the seventies when goaltenders didn't freaking have masks on. Like it's <laughs> yeah. crazy. Yeah. So, um, and I said that on Carlo Koliakovo's show probably a nice. month and a half ago when we were talking about it. See, I nailed it. You nailed, nailed the name. Nailed he always it. messes up Carlo's um, last name. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> which is so, which is messed up because he's like one of the funniest guys on the radio and on Twitter. Like he cracks me up. Um, they had it's me mouthful, in though. stitches laughing last night, him and Mark Mathot on this ridiculous thread on social media. But um, yeah, Jackie, oh, like God. I can't I'd, even I'd, imagine. I'd probably have to have him number one if he hit 70. Like I really would. And I don't have this like affinity to the to the Maple Leafs other than just the appreciation for yeah. the, the Toronto hockey market. I it'll be interesting if he hits it. And I think that I think that he will. I guess we'll see. But if he if he hits 70, the debates that are gonna happen yeah. for Nathan McKinnon and Austin Matthews are gonna be. I hope that they're feisty. Like this is where everyone in the media has to step up and on all these shows, people need to like go to war over Matthews <laughs> versus McKinnon. Oh, we definitely it. will. We definitely will. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll continue to back Panarin and all those two. I'll sneak him in there. But uh he, exactly. well, wait, wait, wait. I want to hear your argument for Panarin. The Rangers have been the number one team in the NHL. If they win the presence trophy. Like I, I think if you elevate your team to that level, it, yeah. it makes your case that but, much. But better. is he an MVP caliber player without Matt Rempe? <laughs> <laughs> Not without Lafreniere, that's for fucking oh, sure. Listen, God, don't, I don't know, don't the, go the there. numbers say that the Rangers win when Rempe's in the lineup, don't they? Does that? Jackie, Jackie, no. Jackie, is Alexi Lafreniere going to be a hundred point player in I the told NHL? Her, I told her this was going to happen. I warned so, her. so here's my thing don't with Lafreniere. Be a Yes or no? <laughs> be a politician. Enough, so gonna be a politician. Dancing around. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, I'm gonna say no, but I think I would love to have a conversation with you guys as former players, just about the way that Lafreniere came into the NHL. He's been in for what is it? This is his fourth season. This he's is had three. This is his fourth season. year. Yeah. So he's had three coaches. He came in during the crazy pandemic friggin' half season, whatever. Like his first NHL season started in January after it's eight months games. of like yeah. wear a mask, don't leave your house and like whatever. I don't know where he lived during that time, but if he was in Canada, like it was brute. It was awful. You couldn't do anything. Outside. So like, I just wonder, like, I would love to, to like. Office in Canada, by the way, you need to. Fix, <laughs> fix I would case, love please. to just know, like, the psychology on like a player like that yeah. with high expectations, top prospect going into a major market, but not having the normal introduction to the NHL, the normal lead. No like, I don't know. Probably. No, I just, I just, yeah. I mean, huge, huge factor. But um, and then just all <laughs> like the rotation of coaches and everything else. I don't know. It's interesting. But I I'm gonna say no right now. All right. Because I don't enough, think we've enough. seen. I don't re think we've seen enough from him to say that he'll be a hundred point player. No, I have seen but enough. but he has turned into. You've a seen real enough. Player. I've seen enough. I'm he's, he's, so, he's, super happy that he's having he's, the year that he's yeah, having. Because like I be, felt for him, him and Kako. I felt for both of them. Mid, mid fifty point guy this year. He's not afraid to go play between the hash marks, which I which I appreciate. He he definitely has a 200 foot game, which I appreciate. But nothing about his game says like I'm an elite 100 point scorer. He he may end up even being an all star type of player, maybe maybe. But I don't see I don't see traits that you see out of these guys that really are these 100 point elite level threats every time they touch the puck. I, I just don't see it. What's he got? What's he got? Like 20 something? Five. Goals? How many goals? 25 goals? Six, maybe, I think. Yeah. Like if he can away from him. If he can be a consistent 30 goal scorer in the NHL, like that's awesome. That's great. Like be that. 30, you know, you can have a long career being that. 30 and 40, 30 and 50, even on a great season. But you just look at the players in the NHL who haven't got 100 points, and it's sometimes you're like, Rich wow. Marner. I can't, I, I can't believe it. Guys, guys, guys sitting on 99 last like, hey, year. Hey, listen, he hasn't broke that plane and that plane is hard to break. So yeah, but he had 97 the year before and he missed a couple of games. Like Marner's a hundred. Is that, is that plane yeah. getting easier to break though? Like, do you feel it's, like we're like trending it. in a way where like it's getting not, it, it's never easy. So like, it's hard to throw that word out there, but it feels like it's becoming more common again. If that yeah. makes sense, also, like it was, and then it wasn't, and now it is. 
but also I mean, to your point, Johnny, you got to yeah. stay healthy. Part of yeah. being a, an elite player is is staying healthy and like being there and being able to play every night, you know, or you know, if you're not, you better you better have a lot of five point games. Like you better yeah. be able to do what McDavid does, where he just you know scores 17 points in four games. Like <laughs> you know, you gotta then, find out whatever nutrition uh, nutrition plan Phil Kessel's on. That guy never got hurt. Oh, what about Obi with the subway and the Cheetos lately? Um, <laughs> yeah, what is that? Well, last does you know what sub he gets? No, we gotta find that out though. That um, means the information I need to know. That's your job. You got to get that out of them, right? You got to talk <laughs> yeah. to Ovi and find that out. But to your other point, Jackie, about, you know, more 100 points now, like, think about how many 100-point scorers we see each year. Ten years ago, Jamie fucking Ben won the heart, or I don't know if he actually won the I think Carrie Price won the heart. But Jamie Ben won the he score the Ross. 87 yeah. points. 87 points. That led the league. That's yeah. insane compared Crazy. to where we are today, you know? Yeah. So, Listen, I, like I know you have today. to go. I, I feel bad that we've kept you so long, but thank you so much. You're the best always. Um, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, hopefully. Good luck tonight. And uh, push that Rempe and Lafreniere narrative. We need it. All right. Uh, vote Jackie Redman 2025. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Right, What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli. Fantasy updates from Brock Sagan and a daily live show at noon Eastern Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.